In 1957, a lady named Frances Spencer created her very first chrismon tree. She wanted a tree at her church that represented Jesus rather than Santa. And so her tradition has carried on even till today. It's very possible that you've seen a chrismon tree at a church you've visited or one you currently attend. The word chrismon comes to us from two other words, Christ and monogram. And so the tree represents theology. It represents ideas and titles that we associate with Jesus at Christmas time. So we thought it'd be a good idea to look at the different ornaments that are on our tree and talk about how they relate to Christmas and help us with a winter devotional from now until Christmas Day. And today we are going to look at the very familiar icon of the five-pointed star, or as we call it on our tree, the Epiphany Star. You know, people have been fascinated by stars, these luminous points of light embedded in the night's darkness for millennia, long before any understanding of their scientific significance emerged, the stars associated with the heavens have long been a part of our story. The earliest five-pointed star that we know about is found on a jar dated 3100 BCE, which was found on a dig north of Thebes in Egypt. Now the name Epiphany comes from the Greek word epiphania, which means appearance or it means manifestation. And it refers to the appearance of Jesus in the world. Matthew chapter two, verses one and two say, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Epiphany in the Christian calendar is the official end of the 12 days of Christmas, and many Christians celebrate this day by remembering the journey of the wise men. We remember that these magi found their way to Jesus by following a bright heavenly body, which we usually represent by a star. Why did they do this? Well, the most likely explanation is that they had heard of these Jewish prophecies, which foretold of a coming savior king who offered salvation to all nations, and as small and as unimportant as Israel was at the time, its religion still had a lot of prestige because it was one of the only monotheistic faiths. And that attracted a lot of people. People who were searching for a more demanding and a more pure form of faith. They wanted to put aside the many gods of their lives and they wanted to find Israel, literally. We see this in the New Testament. We see both an Ethiopian and an Italian centurion attracted to the faith of the Jews. So this dazzling epiphany star would have been a sign in an age when stargazing was just as much astrology as it was astronomy. Back then, one didn't simply observe the stars, we also learned from them. And so the wise men set off to learn about this new king. May the stars on your own Christmas tree remind you that Christmas extends past the 12 days of Christmas to as many days as there are stars in the sky. Merry Christmas.